Today I will be covering biotechnology principles and processes and biotechnology and its applications. Briefly, I will run through how to access the revision note and test in ClaySix.com. Open the page ClaySix.com and click on practice. So you will see a lot of packages. Since we are doing need cash course, we need premium course, we shall click on need premium here. And here you find a lot of tests in physics, chemistry, biology, chapter wise tests. And then if you click on them, you will see that there are a lot of uh, colored bubbles. So each bubble is a test. A test. You can again revisit the test and retake the test any number of times a for the purpose of practice or improve your score. A blue bubble indicates that you have not completed the test yet. A yellow bubble indicates that you have started the test but you did not complete the test. You might have started the test and after two or three questions you have realized you are not really ready with the test and hence you would have just discontinued the test. And once if you look at it, depending upon the chapter's uh, importance and also the complexity of the text, they are all a varied number of tests here. And uh, these tests are in an order. They uh, are put up accordingly. And if you look at the red bubble, it is a randomized test. Once you have completed all these tests, if you click on this, this will help you to analyze the randomized test will give you questions of varying degrees of complexity and this will help you to analyze your understanding of the concept application of the concept and so on it is like an indicator for a self analysis to know your own strengths and weaknesses and there is a button here if you click this it will open into revision notes so this revision notes, if you look at it, it is only made up of 135 pages wherein your 11th and 12th physics, chemistry, biology have been summarized so that it is very handy for you to revise during the examination time. And before getting into this, let me also give you a framework about your uh, uh, examination. From our analysis, we have realized it that there are three kinds of questions. One is NCRT based question, wherein 68 to 70 questions are being featured. And next, uh, it is directly from the textbook. Once you are thorough with your NCRT textbooks, you will be able to answer all the questions. Around 8 to 10 questions are going to be from a uh, uh, past papers so if you have solved all the neat past papers it will be very very easy for you and the remaining 8 to 10 questions are modified questions this will be very new in the need by mere mugging up of the concepts you will not be able to answer them it requires application and also concepts and these become the game changers so for you to prepare adequately for all the three kinds of questions we have framed the test in such a way that it helps you to prepare adequately and hence i suggest if you could buy this package it would be of great an asset for your study as a study material now let us get back with this framework i hope you have understood the framework now let me get Get into the list today. The first one is biotechnology principles and processes. The European Federation of Biotechnology defines biotechnology as the integration of natural science and organisms, cells, parts thereof, and molecular analogs for products and services. Genetic engineering is the technique of altering the genetic material, which could be either DNA and RNA, to these host organisms and just change the phenotype of the host organism. In chromosomes, there is a specific DNA sequence and it is called as the origin of the patient, which is responsible for initiating replication. In genetic engineering, the foreign DNA is linked with the origin of replication. So the foreign DNA can replicate and multiply itself in the host organism, which is also known as cloning or making multiple identical copies of any template DNA. Stanley Cohen and Herbert Boyer in 1972. Antibiotic resistance gene. 
which was making multiple identical copies of any template DNA. The cutting of DNA at specific locations became possible with the discovery of the so-called molecular scissors called the restriction enzymes. Now, if at all you are looking at the steps of uh, genetic uh, engineering, the first step will be identification of the DNA with uh, Uh, desirable genes and introduction of the identified DNA into the host and maintenance of introduced DNA in the host and transfer of the DNA to its progeny. Now, what are the tools that aid in recombinant DNA technology? They are restriction enzymes, polymerase enzymes, ligases and vector host organisms. Now, restriction enzymes are responsible for restricting the growth of bacteriophage in E. coli and was called as restriction endonuclease. The first restriction endonuclease hinged to always cut DNA molecule at a particular point by recognizing a specific sequence of six base pairs called recognition sequence. Recon restriction enzymes belong to a group of enzymes called as the nucleases because they cut the base sequence. Each restriction endonuclease recognizes a specific palindromic nucleotide sequence in the DNA. Restriction enzymes cut the strand of DNA a little away from the center of the palindrome site between the palindromic site between the same two bases on the opposite sides having the sticky strand. The stickiness of the strands will facilitate the action of the enzyme DNA ligase to bring in the union. Now separation and isolation of DNA factors. Fragments. Fragment of DNA obtained by cutting DNA using restriction enzyme is separated by a technique called gel electrophoresis. Negatively charged DNA fragments can be separated by forcing them to move towards electric field to the medium. DNA fragments separate according to their size through sieving effect provided by agarose gel. The separated DNA fragment can be visualized after staining the DNA with the ethidium bromide followed by exposure to UV light and separated bands of DNA are separated from agarose gel and extracted from the gel and this process is called as elution. The DNA fragment purified in this way is used for recombination. Now you need cloning vectors. Plasmids and bacteriophages are commonly used as vectors. There are other kinds of vectors like cosmids and fast too. They have the ability to replicate within bacterial cells independent of the control of the chromosomal DNA. Now, what are the features that are required for cloning the vector? So, the features of cloning the vector are it should have an origin of replication. This is a sequence from where replication starts and any piece of DNA when linked to this sequence can be made to replicate within the host cell. This sequence is also responsible for controlling the copy number of the linked DNA. Next is selectable marker. It is a gene which helps in identifying and eliminating non-transformants from transformants by selectively permitting the growth of transformants. The process through which a piece of DNA is introduced into a host bacterium is called transformation. The genes encoding resistance to antibiotics are considered useful selectable marker for E. coli. Next is the cloning site. A location on a cloning vector into which a foreign gene can be introduced is called as a cloning site. The vector must have very few recognition sites. Presence of more than one recognition site within the vector will produce several fragments which will make the process of gene cloning more complicated. Next you have therefore foreign DNA is ligated at the restriction site present in one of the two antibiotic resistance. So now with this, this is about the characteristics of cloning vector. Now let us look at a, a plasmid agarobacterium tumor fashions. It is able to deliver a piece of DNA known as tDNA to transform normal plant cells into tumor and direct these tumor cells to produce the chemicals required by the pathogen. Competent host, what does it mean? Nowadays, DNA is directly introduced into the host cell by microinjection, in which DNA is directly injected into the nucleus of an animal cell through biolistic or gene gun is used to inject DNA to the target host. Now, what are the uh, recombinant technology involves several steps that you should be aware of and it is very important. One is isolation of DNA, fragmentation of DNA by restriction endonucleases, 
isolation of a desired DNA fragment, ligation of the DNA fragment into vector, transforming the recombinant DNA into the host, culturing the host cells in the medium at large scale, and extraction of the desired product. So the downstreaming process actually involves that makes the product which is obtained ready for marketing and this process includes separation and purification called as downstream processing. Suitable preservatives are added to it and sent it for clinical trial in case of drugs before it is released into the market for the public use. So this completes the key concepts of the lesson, principles and processes of biotechnology. Now let us look into the applications of biotechnology. Now the critical areas of biotechnology are providing the best catalyst in the form of improved organism, usually a microbe or pure enzyme, creating optimal conditions through engineering for a catalyst to add and downstream processing technologies to purify the protein or the organic compound. Biotechnological applications in agriculture includes uh, that is plants, bacteria, fungi and animals whose genes have been altered by manipulation are called genetically modified organisms and these are also called GMOs. What are the advantages? It makes crops more tolerant to abiotic stresses like cold, drought, salt and heat, reduces reliance on the chemical pesticides because most of them become pest resistant by themselves, helps to reduce post-harvest losses, increases efficiency of mineral usage by the plants and enhances nutritional values of the food example vitamin a enriched rice now let us look at some of the examples one is bt cotton some strains of bacillus thuringiensis produce proteins that kill certain insects such as lepidopterans and coleopterans and dipterans Bacillus thuringiensis forms a protein crystal during a particular phase of their growth. These crystals contain a toxic insecticidal protein. These proteins are present in inactive toxin form but become an active toxin in the alkaline pH of the insect's gut. The activated toxin will bind to the surface of the midgut epithelial cells and create pores that cause cell swelling and lysis and eventually it causes the death of an organism. Specific Bt toxin genes are isolated from Bacillus thuringiensis and genetically transferred to several plants such as cotton. Crystal proteins are produced by a gene called CRY in Bacillus thuringiensis. So you have to understand it is CRY is all in lower case. Sometimes they will ask capital C and low case R and low case Y. That is wrong. It is all three low case CRY in Bacillus thuringiensis. The proteins coded by genes CRY1AC and CRY2AB control the cotton bollworms. The protein coded by the gene CRY1AB controls corn borer. Now, pest resistant plants. Several nematodes prioritize a wide uh, variety of plants and animals, including human beings. A nematode called Melodegyne incognitia infects the root of the tobacco plants and causes a great reduction in the yield. Now, the strategy that is uh, based on RNA interference prevents this infestation, process by which a double stranded RNA, that is DSRNA, directs the sequence specific degradation of mRNA, is known as RNA interference. Now, let me briefly tell you uh, the steps of DNA interference, RNA interference. Double stranded RNA is produced endogenously or exogenously. Using agrobacterium vectors, nematode specific genes were introduced into the host plant. Introduction of DNA produces both sense and antisense RNA in the host. These two RNAs being complementary to each other formed a double stranded RNA that initiated RNA I, that is RNA interference. The D, double stranded RNA injected into the host plant from outside called D, the exogenous DSRNA. DSRNA are cleaved into 21 to 23 segments by an enzyme called DISA. Now, SIRNAs, that is also called as small interfering RNAs, are incorporated into RNA induced silencing complex, which is also called as the RISC RISC. Guided by base complementarity of SIRNA, the RISC targets mRNA for degradation. The consequence was that parasite could not survive in a transgenic. Post. Now let us look at biotechnological applications in medicine. Biotechnology enables mass production of safe and more effective therapeutic drugs. 
Recombinant therapeutics does not induce unwanted immunological responses as in case of similar products isolated from non-human sources. At present, around 30 recombinant therapeutics are approved for human use. Now, example is genetically engineered insulin. So, but diabetic patients, you know, they had to take insulin regularly depending upon the type of diabetes they, they, uh, they are uh, having. They are having. If it is an insulin dependent diabetics had to take insulin at regular intervals. Previously, the source of insulin was started was from the sorted cattle in the pigs. This insulin caused allergy in some patients. Each insulin is made up of two short peptide chains, chain A and chain B, that are linked together by disulfide linkage. Insulin synthesized in pancreas as prohormone, which is a single polypeptide with an extra stretch called C peptide. C peptide is removed during matured insulin. In 1980, an American company prepared two DNA sequences corresponding to A and B chains of human insulin and introduced them in plasmids of E. coli to produce insulin chains. Chain A and chain B produced separately, extracted and combined by creating disulfide bonds to form mature human insulin. Now let us look at gene therapy. Gene therapy is an attempt to cure hereditary or genetic diseases. Genes are inserted into a person's cell and tissues to treat the disease. The first clinical gene therapy was given in 1990 to a four-year-old girl with adenosine minus deficiency or ADA deficiency. This enzyme is required for the breakdown of deoxyadenosine into uric acid. In the absence of ADA toxic deoxyadenosine, it's accumulated and destroys the infection causing immune cells called T cells and B cells. This disorder is caused due to the deletion of the gene for adenosine deaminase and the chromosome 20. Now the treatment was by bone marrow transplantation. Enzyme replacement therapy involving repeated injections of the ADA enzyme. <coughs> Lymphocytes from the blood of the patient are grown in the culture. A functional ADA, cDNA is then introduced into these lymphocytes and returned into the body. The patient required periodic infusion of genetically engineered lymphocytes because these cells are not immortal. Functional ADA, cDNA introduced into cells at early embryonic stages could be the permanent cure. Now let us look at molecular diagnosis. Early detection of disease is not possible by conventional methods like using serum and urine or blood. Now there are molecular diagnostic techniques that have emerged due to by applications of biotechnology that is like a recombinant DNA technology, polymerase chain reaction, ELISA that is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay and all such stuff. Now transgenic animals Animals that have an alien DNA which is able to express in it is called transgenic animals. Reasons for transgenic animals would be normal physiology and development. They are specifically designed to allow the study of how genes are regulated, how the genes affect the normal functioning of the body, <coughs> how it affects the growth and development. The animals may transgenic to know the biological effect and the result. And also to study of a disease we are using Using transgenic animals and to obtain biological products like alpha 1 antitrypsin, which is used to treat emphysema, proteins for the treatment of PKU and cystic fibrosis. Now, there was a transgenic cow, Rosie, produced human protein which enriched milk with human alpha lactalbumin. For vaccine safety, we use transgenic cow. mice are being developed and used in testing the safety of vaccines before they are used for humans and polio vaccine is tested in mice and chemical safety testing this is also known as toxicity or safety testing transgenic animals are made to know uh, from the transgenic animals are made to know the effect of the toxic chemicals but apart from all these things it's only the benefit is only for the mankind. So when we are using it only for our share benefit, there should be some kind of ethical codes and contexts have to be done. So GEEK, that is Genetic Engineering and Approval Committee, was set up by Indian government, which will make decisions regarding the validity of GM research and safety of introducing GM organisms for public services. A patent is a right granted by the government to an prevent others from commercial use of his invention. Patents granted for biological entities and also for products.
products derived from them and these patents are called bio patents there are 27 documented varieties of basmati which is grown in india now bio piracy is the term used to refer to the use or exploit or patent of biological resources by mutational company multinational companies and other organizations without proper authorization from the countries and people concerned without compensatory payment so these are the broad things you had to know i have summarized it in a nutshell and this is all available in your pdf now let us look into the test so first let us help in two test biolet technology principles and processes Resistant transgenic cotton has been produced by inserting a piece of DNA from a bacterium patients. Now, in polymerase chain reaction, a synthetic sequence of nucleotides are involved in denaturing, heating, priming, and copying all of the above. Which of the following can be controlled by using biopesticides? All of them can be controlled by using biopesticides. Vaccines produced by recombinant DNA technology are known as second generation vaccines. Which of the following is used as a microbial insecticide, Bacillus thuringiensis? Producing a giant mouse in the laboratory was possible through gene manipulation. The second step in most of the genetic engineering experiments is production of recombinant DNA. Production of human protein in bacteria by genetic engineering is possible because the genetic code is universal. I told you when we were discussing, it is the same from prokaryotes to eukaryotes. Human insulin is commercially produced from transgenic species of Escherichia coli. To identify an individual by DNA analysis of the blood, investigate. DNA fingerprints. And monoclonal antibodies are used in all of the above. Now the present thing is even they are trying to use monoclonal antibodies to nullify the or uh, to silence the COVID-19 also. The research is on and to some extent I think Israel is successful but the results are after the trials only it will be allowed into the market. Small proteins produced by vertebrate cells naturally in response to viral infections and those inhibit multiplication of viruses are called interferons. Which of the following enzyme is used to remove protein stain from the clothes? It is protease, obviously. Hybridomas are the fusion product of normal antibody producing cell with myeloma. The technique used for detecting specific target DNA is called Southern blotting. So I'm ending the test here. So all our answers are correct. 
If any one answer is wrong, it would be showing the red box. When you click on that box, you will be able to see your answer and also the correct answer. And along when you scroll down, you will be able to see the explanation too. If you have not attempted it, it will be showing in a yellow color. If you click again on that box, you will be seeing the correct answer along with the explanation. So in this way, you will also be able to know where you have made a mistake and what is the correct answer and why it is a correct answer. So with this, we complete uh, today's uh, class. Now, if you look at our NEAT full test, it has got 38 full tests. If uh, a 15 or uh, eight test, taking into consideration all the different kinds of questions that can be asked in your NEAT, we have created these tests. And uh, then you have 20 or more past papers, all completely solved with solutions. And uh, it will be easy for you to practice and prepare so that you are able to get adequate marks for your get an admission into your uh, MBBS course. And now if you want to ask anything, you can use our ask feature to pose your questions. In case you feel that still there is time you want to have one-to-one -one, uh, uh, classes with the tutors, you can also book a slot with the tutors for a particular topic or for a particular subject. And we also support our students on the chat telegram chat groups. And in case you have any other query, you can mail your query to info at k6.com. Thank you. With us, we complete our classes.